Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I have not done a full primer wear test in a very long time and the Truth Ola Henriksen Banana Brightening Primer just came out and I have been dying to reach into it and use it. I have not touched it at all yet so this is going to be a first impression and wear test. So if that's something you're into make sure to keep on watching and please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week and that is the best way to stay updated on all the fun stuff I'm posting. So if you want to see me jump into this primer, see how it performs and everything else, keep on watching. Okay, so first, this primer does retail for $36. Vitamin C and banana powder inspired pigments. So this is going to help to brighten and smooth out texture and tone. Will also be slightly blurring, can be worn under makeup or dabbed on top as a highlight. Uh, external use only, blah, 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 beautiful. All right, so it does come with a pump and squeezy tube, which is some of my favorite type of packaging. So right off the bat, it definitely looks a little luminous, which I am not opposed to. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that on the face. There's definitely some shine and some glow going on. It smells like vitamin C. It does not smell like banana, which is amazing because I absolutely hate the smell of banana. Now, because the first pump that comes out is never a full pump when you're like, really getting that first pump out. I will say that I used about a pump and a half just because of the quantity that came out at the second pump. The skin does look very like glowy, a little bit on the luminous side. Everything looks kind of smooth and blurred, I'll give it that. I wouldn't say that I necessarily see the pigment that they were talking about, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I don't love pigmented primers. So I'm going to go in and tie up some foundation. I'm going to be taking the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation today, which I have been wearing basically nonstop for a while. I did use it in my no brand makeup tutorial, so you have seen me use it, but you didn't know you saw me use it. And I'm going to be taking that on the Morphe Jeffree Star sponge today. So it definitely did give a smooth base so that the foundation can lay nicely. So foundation laid very nicely on top of the primer. My pores, I mean, they've definitely looked better, but this does not blame to be claim, not blame. This does not claim to be a super smoothing primer. So like my Tarte, Clean Slate or my Tatcha Silk Canvas do tend to work a little bit better, I'm not gonna lie. However, all things considered, my pores do look really small. They're not necessarily exaggerated. Some uh, primers will actually exaggerate that texture, whereas this one, it's not like super blurring, but it's definitely not accentuating them. Now it did say to try using it over makeup as a highlight, so I'm gonna go throw on my concealer and come back to try this as a highlight before we powder the face. All right, so concealer is done. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more of the primer on the back of my hand, and I'm just gonna take the back of the sponge, and I'm gonna add a tiny bit to the high points of the cheek. So I don't know if it's me or if it's the lighting, but that does not seem to be doing anything. Like there's a little bit of a glow, but that's just from putting a wet product on top. Like once that dries down, I feel like we're not gonna see that at all. So I don't know why they claim to use this as a highlight, which is kind of weird for me, but they do. And I'm gonna say that is a pass for me for like a highlight, but as far as a primer, like so far so good. I'm gonna go powder and touch up and tie up the rest of the face and I'll be right back. All right, so the face is wrapped up. We're gonna call the check-in time 11.30. I'm gonna try and give this a few hours before my first check-in and I will see you guys in a little bit. I'm gonna zoom you in first just for a little bit of an update. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of like texture on the skin. Normally my pores would be a lot more smoothed out from here. And if you guys can see like all of this texture and all of these pores are very accentuated. Normally my highlight is just as blinding and you really don't see as much of this like high pore area. But I mean, from far away, it looks great. Um, I do have a lot of primers that I tend to really like pairing with others. So like I will go in with my Tarte Clean Slate or my Tatcha Silk Canvas 
and I'll put one of these more like longevity skincare based primers on top just so I can kind of get the best of both worlds. So as of right now, this is not something I will use on its own, but I'll let you know how it works to see if it's something I will use at all. This is check-in number one. Mac decided this is where he wants to lay. I am editing some footage from the other day and actually cutting the footage from the beginning of this video. Dropped my car if I got an oil change. Basically, I've been doing like a million and one things all day. The one thing I will say is that there's definitely more texture on my cheek than there normally is. Everything else looks nice and it's sitting well. However, like I normally don't have this much texture and I'm not a fan. So again, this is something I'll have to layer with something else, but as far as on its own, the integrity of the makeup, it has not changed since I first applied, but we will have to see throughout the day to make sure this doesn't get worse. So we are still looking pretty okay. So it's roughly 345 now. I am starting to get a little bit of oils showing through, but this does not claim to be mattifying and I did not use any mattifying um, primers today. The only mattifying products I used, my setting spray was mattifying and my skincare. So other than that, there's been no mattifying products. We are getting a little shiny and our pores have not gotten worse. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be a good primer if you don't have a lot of texture and you don't have a lot of pores. If you do, obviously it is gonna show in, especially wherever you have lots of texture. However, I can always layer this on top of something else, so it still may work. I'll see you guys in a few hours for the final check-in. Okay, so it has been officially almost nine hours. Other than being really, really shiny from my oils coming through because this is not an oil control primer, I think it actually looks really good. Like, my pores have not gotten more accentuated. My blush is still on my face. My highlight is still there. So I'm definitely a little bit on the shiny side. However, the integrity of everything I did put on earlier in the day has definitely worked out nicely. So I am gonna say that this primer is a hit from me. If you have very oily skin, you're gonna wanna go in with something a little bit more mattifying or just be prepared to touch up. I am actually going to grab a little bit of a finishing powder just to see how well everything touches back up. And with a little touch up, we are looking good as new. So for the fact that my blush did not disappear entirely off my face, I am very happy with how this turned out. So as long as you don't use it on its own and you pair it with a different primer if you have more concerns. So like for me, I would use either something a little bit more blurring for my porous areas, or I would go in with something a little bit more mattifying. But other than that, this worked out really well. Definitely a great product and something you will probably see me use a whole lot on this channel. Thanks again for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know down below if you picked this up, what you thought about it, or if you're going to be picking it up because I love hearing your guys' feedback. Thanks again and I will see you guys next time. Bye.